Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today it's something totally different. As you know, we've had a caravan, we've had several motorhomes, and today for the first time ever, we're going camper vanning. I'm really excited. I really am. So I'm telling myself, why am I excited? Jules has always wanted to try a VW camper. I've never quite been convinced, but for the next three nights, I will be away in this. It's a camp away from Broad Lane Leisure. So what are we going to be doing? Well, this vlog, it is, as the title suggests, first time camper vanning. We're going to be going away. We're going to arrive at site. We're going to go through basically how we set up the camp away VW camper, things that you need to know that I need to learn, and we're going to do it together. So if you're considering buying a camper van, this vlog could be really informative for you to make sure you are making the right decision. I haven't got a clue, to be honest. I don't know much about camper vans, so I'm going to learn all about the water system, the electrical system. I won't go as far as I'm going to be cooking on board, but I will be showing you all these things and finding out what it is actually like to live with a camper van as opposed to a caravan or a motorhome. In the following vlogs, I will be doing a full review of the camp away. I'll also be doing a trips video as well. So watch out for the content that's coming. Quick show of the camp away. It is based on a VW Transporter. It has got uh, two seats and the driver's seat, those swivel. It's got the sliding side door. This lets us into our habitation or living space. We've got the rock and roll bed that will convert into a double. We may well try that. It's got the pop top. We'll see that when we get on site and get ourselves set up. There's a double bed up there. I'm definitely going to be sleeping up there because I'm really excited to find out what it's actually like to sleep in a camper van. And all these things I'm going to be telling you about. The one thing this hasn't got is a toilet. We've got no porta potty or anything. That is something else I am very keen to see how I get on with. And I'm sure many of you that go to the loo in the night will be in the same position. So there we go. What I'm going to do is jump in. We're going to set off. Jules is with me. We're going to head off. We're going to go, first of all, to a supermarket. I just want to get a couple of bits. So let's find out, first of all, how easy this is to jump in, go to a supermarket and do a bit of shopping. And then from there, we'll be powering on to our first campsite. We're stopping tonight at Summers Wood, which is a caravan site we've stopped at a lot. We're going there for our first night um, and we'll, we'll see how it all works. So hopefully you'll enjoy this video. <laughs> I know I will. Right, come on then, let's dive in and I'll see you at the supermarket. So I've driven down from Broad Lane, the dealership where I've collected the camp away and I've arrived at Sainsbury's. Obviously you can go to any supermarket. I've just come to the nearest one. I'm just going to grab a few bits, literally just to put in the fridge of the camper because tonight it is fish and chips. So I've just come to get a couple of bits. But the first thing I've noticed is literally because it is only five meters long, I've just parked in a normal bay at the supermarket. I didn't have to think about it. didn't have to worry about it. Unlike a motorhome, where I have to do a lot more planning about whether I'm going to be able to find enough space to park and all the rest of it. So my first comparison really was this, and I must say that's been really easy, um, completely non-stressful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run in, grab some bits and then get those into the fridge. Um, and then I'm heading on to the campsite. So I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to go get some bits.
so I've successfully arrived on site in one piece, always a bonus. So far, I'm really enjoying it. It drives really nicely. I'll cover more about that in the actual review. One thing I'm going to point out straight away, if you just want to come this way, is obviously with a caravan, you've got to set it up and unhitch and all the rest of it. With the motorhome, when I arrive on site, let's say today was horrendous weather. At least when I arrive on site, I, if needs be, I can just swivel my chair around and the motorhome's ready to go. I don't have to worry about my electric hookup because obviously it's got the leisure batteries and the gas and what have you. With this camper, so we've got the driver's seat and then we've got the double passenger seat. Now these seats will not just swivel from the cab. So regardless of what you're going to do, you're going to have to get out to get um, into the back. So if we just come round, now, I know that's not a major thing, but that's just one thing I'm pointing out as just a difference. So the camper, to set it up, I'm going to go through how I would envisage you would set up when you arrive on site. So if we want to swivel these seats, the mechanism is a little bit more complicated than it is on a motorhome. So if you're used to a motorhome, it's a little bit different. What we've got, I'll clamber in. So what we've got are these, these little swivelers and we've got to undo these, <laughs> there's four all together. There's two at the back and there's two at the front. And once you've undone all those, you can swivel the chair. I won't bore you to tears. Okay, so what I'm going to do out of interest is see how level the camper is. Now, I've always leveled caravans, I've always leveled motorhomes, and motorhomes have always been more difficult. They've always generally needed a level, they've been nose down. So let's just see with my level remote. Now this is just an app that I've got on my phone that I've always used. I'm just going to put this onto the floor of the camper and just see how level we are. So it's telling me that I'm down to the left hand side, which I can feel that to be honest, but front and rear I appear to be pretty much as I should. So level wise it's just the near side of the camper that's a little bit lower so if i had some leveling blocks which i haven't got with me i could do that if i wanted to do it so yeah a little app like that is a really good idea so what i'm going to do next is these are internal screens for on a night time so i've got those for later on i'm just going to hook the electric up so the electric hookup is basically the same as the motorhome I'll just get out the biggest electric cable you've ever seen in your life. So I'll get this out. Now, for those of you that have, um, have been caravanning or motorhoming before, you'll be familiar with this. This is the 25 metre electric hookup point. We've got one part that goes into the camper or motorhome, and we've got one part that goes into our electrical hookup bollard. Now, as far as I know, my electric is on the off side of the camper, but let me just make 100% sure before I tell you something really duff. So let's head round here. So, on the camper, we've got, we've got two ends. Here's the electrical hookup point on the camper way, which we can see here. So what I always say is always plug into your camper van before you plug into the bollard. Don't plug into your electric first and walk away with a, around with a live cable. So this end we're going to put into our electrical hookup point. We can see there we've got the three pins and we've got the three receivers on this end. So I'm going to attach this. Okay, so that's onto the camper. Always unravel your electric hookup point as well. I know this will be sucking eggs for some people, but always unravel it. You, these can end up bursting into flames. Never seen it myself, but the amount of uh, heat that can be uh, generated can cause an electrical fire through that. Into the electrical bollard here. And there we go. We should, we should all now be hooked up. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to venture into the camper and turn on the electrical point. So let's go do that. Okay, so that's us hooked up. So in a dive again. So in the camper way, as I think most VW campers, there's an electrical um, point here. This is the on and off panel for the camper itself. So this is the light button. I've then got my water pump button, which I need 
on for obviously producing water through the sink, which is here. And then I've got several buttons here that are going to tell me basically how much power I've got. It's going to tell me the power in the cab battery, the leisure battery, um, and then the amount of water I have. So my power is on, as we can see, we've got lights, we've got electric hookup. There are some plug sockets, as you can see. I'm going to go through all of this when I do the review. These will only work on your electric hookup. Just remember that one. Quick look around. So I've got a Dometic microwave. I've got a little um, Dometic fridge. I'm going to explore everything myself as I go. Um, and I'll be telling you more about it once I've discovered a little bit more. Now, we know we're pretty level. We know we've got electric. What I want to do next is water. So this little camper van does have an onboard water tank. You can have 27 litres of fresh water on the camper. It has already got water in it, but if you needed to put water in, when you arrive on site, what you need to do is make your way either to the motorhome service point, or if you've got a service pitch, is connect a hose pipe to that tap. Now, here at Summerswood, there's already hose pipe on that tap, so you don't need to worry about that. Otherwise, you're going to have to make sure you've got a length of hose with you. And on this camp away, the water point is here. So you just literally unscrew this and then our hose pipe is going in here until we're filled with 27 litres of water. There is the onboard uh, measurements. It'll tell you how much you've got. Wastewater. Now, this is where it's a little bit different from a motorhome because wastewater on the camper van, just under here, you may not be able to see it, I don't know, but here we've got a water outlet. Now, this is very much like a caravan for those of you that are caravanners. The grey water is going to come out of there, so you are going to need a container, a grey waste container to collect that water. Motorhomes have an onboard waste tank. If you're familiar with them, you'll know all about those. So, yes, you've got onboard water in the camper, but you don't have the waste tank. What you've also not got is a toilet. Now, some camper vans, some of the camperways do have like a porta potty. There is one model that even has a proper onboard toilet. This model's got none of that. So when it comes to me needing the loo in the night, I'm going to have to go over to the service block in my pajamas. This is the bit of camper vanning that I really want to explore because I'm not too sure how I'm going to get on with that. So we've talked about water, we've talked about electric, and we've talked obviously about our wastewater. Let's have a look at this roof. Now, the one thing uh, camper vans have got, which uh, motorhomes haven't got, are pop tops. So. As well as having a Dometic canopy, this does wind out and we will be demonstrating that in the full review. We have a pop top. Now, I've never operated a pop top before, so I'm going to literally uh, be a bit of a first timer. Now, when we collected the camper, um, the roof was up and um, it, I was shown briefly how to do it. So whether I can do it or not is, is a whole new ball game. But it's strapped down, as you'll see from here. It's been well strapped down. We have to undo these straps and basically remove these. So I'll take that off. And I'll take this one off as well. Okay, so that releases tension on the pop top. Never drive with your pop top popped. It's not, it's not a good look and it's really dangerous, so don't do that. So that's that. Ooh. Ta-da! <laughs> well, it's popped up. Let me have a look at my handiwork. Well, get me. Yeah, and I've done that without actually swiveling this chair set around. I just wanted to try that. These two chairs here, these do swivel round, so you can sit on those as well as these at the back. So that's how easy that pop top is. And um, those of you that know will know that my back is useless and I've managed to do that. So that's really quite simple. There is um, the bed, so this next bit here, this is also on hydraulics. Now during the day, obviously, there's not a lot of headroom in a camper van. If I just push this up like that, that's on hydraulic struts as well. That was really easy, if I'm honest, um, no problem at all. 
so this is now like proper day mode so if i'm not in bed i've got that popped up and yeah there's loads of headroom that's really good yeah, i'm excited about this so there we go um i've literally shown you arriving on site as a total first time novice i've got i've got the pop top up i've got my electric on i've got my water i've got power on i'm pretty much good to go so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go get my bits sorted in the camper van to work out where everything is going to go because the next question i've got is storage there's not a lot of it there's definitely not a lot of it if, if you travel with a lot of stuff you are really going to struggle because there's not a lot of room i travel very minimalistic <laughs> in fact what i travel with when <laughs> you won't be disappointed i bought some donuts when i went to sainsbury's that's about as much as i've got in terms of food so let me get my bits and we'll work out what we're doing about storage okay so let's talk about storage now i travel light for this trip bedding wise we've got two sleeping bags and two inflatable pillows so that's these so i've already got these clothing we're going away for three nights um <laughs> again i travel light these are actually my little motorhome uh, bags i got these off amazon they were recommended by somebody else I can't remember if it was a lady called denise or sharon um and these have been amazing um so yeah these are go next um like carry bags so brilliant so this is literally our clothes for three nights so that's my clothes and then this bag has got like all my bits in it so i've got some fresh water, some breakfast cereal, so a towel, tea bags, kitchen roll, toiletries, <laughs> uh, chocolate, crisps, coke. I've got a couple of bowls and surface spray and bits like that. So this is, is basically, this is basically just for three nights. Um, the problem is now, I'll just show you the boot if you want to come around here. So. The back end um, of the camper way, there's two versions. You can get either this uh, raising lifting tailgate or the barn door type, which open out towards you. So there's two different types on the camper ways, depending on you know, which model uh, you choose. By crack, you know, this is an extra. So personally, I would only have this fitted, obviously, if I was into cycling. If not, you don't need to have that fitted. But if I just open this tailgate up, Obviously be careful with these, if, especially if you've got electric there. Now you can see straight away storage, there isn't any. Um, you've got a little bit here. So this is maybe where you could put like your bedding. This little flap, you can get under these two seats. So if you've got like camping chairs, you could maybe slide those under there. This is also accessible from inside as well. So that's your main storage. So my clothes and bits and pieces will go in there. You've then got a little cubby hole here um, and you can also access it via this roller shutter here, but that isn't easily accessible from inside, I've, I've noticed really. This is sort of your easiest way in and that's not a big space to, to get in there. So that's the storage there. We'll just bob round here again. So I'm just going to climb in. Okay, so this is the, the roller shutter that I mentioned. And um, that's really difficult to get to from, from in here. Um, but you can get into it. It's just challenging. If this, if this was down, because this does convert into a bed, again, show you it in the, in the review, then that won't be an issue. We've got a little cupboard here, but again, maybe some cups in there. There's a little storage cupboard here. Get a little bit more in there. And then we've got some storage underneath here as well. So I'm going to probably put my kitchen bits in here, my sleeping bags in the back, and the bedding and the clothing as well um, and that so that'll be under these um, seats here the fridge is only small but you're camper vanning you're not motorhoming so you've got to compromise so 
for first time camper vanning, storage, don't take a lot of stuff with you because you just can't carry it unless there's something I'm missing, which I might be because I've not done it before. Um, please put in the comments. You'll know a lot more than me maybe about this, but that's storage covered. So we've got on site, we're set up, I'm going to unpack and then later we're going for fish and chips. We're going to the village Meriden to the chip shop. I'm going to get fish and chips for tea. Um, I'm not cooking. There is a gas, some gas rings, which again, I'll show you when I do it. So you can, you can cook um, if you want to, or you can have a, um, with the sockets, you could use a teppanyaki. So there's lots of options for cooking, but I'm getting fish and chips. So we'll, we will be reviewing the fish and chips together a bit later on. So there we go. I'm going to get myself set up and I'll catch you in a bit. So our first night eating in the camp away, we've got fish and chips, not exciting, but you know I like fish and chips. Um, these are just down the road at Meriden. So I'm going to dive into these um, and then I'm going to go for a shower and then set the bed up and head up there for bedtime. So yeah, let's, um, let's fire into some tea. So this is the next stage of the camper van experience. We've had tea, that was fine. The little table, that is great. The way the seats work, that is great. When the table's not out, I must say, there's plenty of, sort of floor space in the camper van. So that's a good thing. And there's lots of headroom when this bed is up. Now, tonight, the plan is to sleep in the um, pop top and then we will try the rock and roll bed. So I have never, uh, tried a pop top bed. I have no idea really even how to get up there. So I'm just going to go for it. Um, obviously in the canvas, you can see that there's like these little bits that you can unzip as well. Hold on a minute. I have taken my shoes off, so don't worry. I'm not standing on the leather. So these unzip as well. And you've got this like nice window that you can look out of. This is plastic, but this will be nice. I'm hoping tomorrow morning I can just have a nosy out at everybody out of there. So yeah, I've already noticed though that um, it's quite, it's not been a cold day today. It is meant to get to five degrees tonight, which that's fairly cold. Um, we've got the sleeping bags. I think it could get quite cold up here tonight. And this is again, something I'm really interested to find out. We're talking like what we're, we're on the, I think it's the ninth, 19th of April so we're towards the end of April so the weather's not cold cold but it's not really warmed up as yet so it'd be interesting to see how cold the pop top of a camper van is overnight tonight if tomorrow morning you tune in and I'm downstairs you know this has not gone well so what I'm going to do now is try and work out how how I'm going to get onto this so I'm going to pull it down in a second and then try and climb up Again, I always talk about heights and weights and sizes. I'm five foot four, um, so this is how I'm going to try and get up. I believe I've been told the weight limit on this camp away, this, this bed is 200 kilograms altogether. It is designed for two people, it's a double bed, and it is on these uh, easy to raise uh, hydraulics. So I'm going to try and clamber up there and then I will get the sleeping bags passed up to me. If you're by yourself, then obviously you can just throw them up yourself. But first time, I'm going for it. So beginner's luck, I hope. <laughs> if not, I'll see you in hospital. So if I pull this down to start with, and it takes quite a pull, does that, to be fair? <laughs> but then it's down, as you can hear. Right, oh, so the bed's really good, actually. What I'll do is I'll just get the camera and actually show you this. This is, I'm quite excited about this. So I'm just going to take the camera and show you up here. Ta-da! Here we are. So that is the back of the camper van. Obviously, I'm still up where I was a second ago. The feet, the feet are going to go down there, unless you like squishing your head. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of room. I mean, from sort of the mattress here to this sort of roof bit up here, that is, that's a good couple of feet easily. So yeah, that's fantastic. Right, I'll drop you back down and I'll carry on getting on board. Right, so 
I've shown you up here. I'm now going to try and get in. Oh my God, I'm so graceful. Oh, right, to be fair, that wasn't too bad. There's even some little grab handles as well. So, I've, I've dived up in the most graceful manner imaginable. Right, so I haven't put my sleeping bags out as yet. This, this is obviously quite close to my head, as you can see. The end, literally, I could maybe come to here. So you do have some space there. There are, I don't know whether you can see them from the video, but there's these handles that you can hold on to to help yourself up if you want to. There's these little side, let's have a look at one of these. So there's some side canvases that come down and this has got a mesh ventilation. Now, because the sun's out, it is quite warm. So that, that'll be quite handy in certainly the very much warmer months. I'll zip that up a second. Okay, so lengthwise, yeah, it's pretty long. I'd say if you were at six foot, you're going to be somewhere near near the limit um, on this maybe, but we'll find out tonight because Jules is six foot one. So there we go, I climbed up. That wasn't too difficult. I've just got to get back down again. Um, I've got to get back down. And as I say, there's no, there's no loo in the camper. So tonight, once I've made the bed, and I've got changed. If I have to go, I'm going to have to go out. I'm going to have to climb down here. There are some little lights up here, so at least I can bob a light on and then climb down and make my way. Right, I'm going to get the sleeping bags, make the bed, and there we go. Right, I'll catch you in a little bit. So, I've made the beds. <laughs> I'm going to try and come back down now. I know in the comments everyone will tell me that I'm totally useless and that there's a really easy way to do this and I just don't know it. So that's fine. I'll take that on board. There we go. <sighs> Ta -da! To be fair, <laughs> getting down is a lot easier. It's easier to go down than it is to go up. Um, I've done the beds. It is really warm up there. That's um, very warm. So I'm glad we've got those little mesh zips. Um, yeah, bed made. I feel like now I'm ready to just get changed and chill out and there's that shouldn't be an issue in here it is quite comfortable i've got i've adopted this little double seat and jules has adopted like the sofa bit so between us we're all pretty set up um i think it, we may catch you possibly once we've both got up there to let you know how we've got on at bedtime um if not i will see you in the morning but otherwise so far day one with the camper has gone quite well i'm it's an experience. It is certainly an experience and and it's interesting to compare it to a motorhome because we have a lot. Um, yeah, interesting. But we'll come to that later when we do a summary. So there we go. We'll catch you probably at bedtime. Morning. So it is the morning after the night before. We are obviously still in the camp away and we're going to talk now about how we found last night and what we've learnt because we've learned quite a, quite a lot. It was a we? steep learning curve. <laughs> it was a really steep learning curve. Now, joking aside, obviously we know a lot about caravans and motorhomes, but we've not been camper vanning. And this is something we'd always wanted to try. Mm, yeah. So I think we tried everything. Probably, last probably night. me more than me more than Karina wanted to try this. But yeah. so let's talk about what happened last night. So after we left you, we'd made the bed up on the top deck, and we knew it'd be cold up there but we didn't realize how cold so we clambered up and well i think the first problem came you climbed up first didn't you you managed to climb up quite easily yeah 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 so although jules is big not an issue climbing up no problem and spinning round spinning round was the the, <laughs> the issue to get my legs down this end but. yeah it, yeah that was interesting um i think you found it quite restrictive didn't you yeah was the first thing um I, spoiler alert, my, my problems were it was too restrictive because I wanted to lie on my back and my feet were actually unable to be straight yeah. because they were touching the roof. Uh, and secondly, the mattress was too thin. It was like lying on this yeah. for me because I'm, I'm heavy. Yeah. Um, so. and, and I got in my sleeping bag next to you and 
there, there was room for the two of us, but it was quite tight. And I felt restricted as well, to be honest, and I'm only small. And we definitely said though, if you're sleeping up there, you either need a really good mattress topper or duvelets. And yeah. we, we have duvelet sleeping bags before and they are brilliant. So that would probably alleviate some of the comfort issues, yeah. but not the space. It was cold as well, wasn't it? It very once the sun went down, it really quickly got cold. So at this point, we were like, let's not even waste our time trying to sleep here. Let's just come downstairs. So we clambered down, brought our sleeping bags. We pulled out this. I just um, want to quickly add. Bed. We do know that you can get the insulation for yeah. the roof as well. We haven't got that, so no. that might make a world of difference. I don't know. No. We didn't have that. No, and we tr we tried it at least. So then we came back down here, pulled out the rock and roll bed. That was much better, wasn't it? There was a lot more room. Um, it was a lot more comfortable because obviously it's this leather foam seating. That was comfy. Um, what we noticed though last night, now this is where we think we went wrong. And like this is our first time, so we've got, we've got all excited and just done things we probably shouldn't have do, done. We left the top up and because it was cold last night, we were freezing, weren't we? Yeah. We were under our sleeping bags my feet were i was frozen i'll be honest i was frozen you were cold um we do have a heater now it's a gas heater i think if it had been an electric heater it wouldn't have been as much of an issue because i'd have been happy just to run the heater but because it's gas i was then in the back of my mind thinking well are we going to run out of gas then we won't have the heater so those were things we very quickly learned and what we're going to do tonight we've decided already so this is what i mean within Oh, what well, 24 hours we have learned so much tonight which again it won't be much warmer tonight we're going to sleep straight on the rock and roll bed and we're going to leave the top down and keep the heater set at a certain temperature and if we run out of gas well that's another trial and error and something else that we then think about whether the gas heater would be better as a diesel heater that you can get so yeah, I know some of you will just be laughing at us and thinking, well, you pair of clowns, of course you're going to get cold, or of course you're going to do this or that. But our first time, and, and like I say, we learnt a lot in yeah. 24 hours. So that was last night. But as we've always said as well, you know, if you can, try before you buy. Yeah. You know, this is a higher vehicle, and we're trying, you know, yeah. we're trying it out. So, you know, massive advocates for that and we've learned like you say we've learned yeah. we've learned a lot just in one night so well come, well we can come to that in a bit because then um so this morning we woke up you went to the loo at half five i managed to go the whole night without going um and i think i actually drank less last night because i was a bit conscious about going to the loo even if we had a porta potty thing going on in here with the bed pulled out i think we'd have yeah, struggled to get onto a loo I know you can get a tent outside and put a loo in there. If I've spent a lot of money, I'm not so excited about going for a wee in a tent, if I'm absolutely honest. That is me personally. Um, so that, that was, but that was fine. I didn't have to get up. I got up this morning about half seven, went off to the facilities, um, had a shower. By the time I came back, Jules had pulled the rock and roll back into the seating. Um, so we had our space, we had a couple of cups of tea. We popped, did we pop the roof at that yeah. point? We popped the roof, uh, oh no, yeah, because you, you closed I it closed down first thing. We closed to it get to heating. heat us up because we were so cold at half seven. So we closed the roof, which we'd learned was a good thing to do. Put the heater on and it was that was warm then. Had a couple of cups of tea, had some breakfast, washed up. And yeah, that was fine. Getting changed, there was enough room to get changed. Um, so that was fine. So what we've learned has been really important. There's always a compromise. I'd say the camper van is fantastic just to drive about. It's fantastic to park in car parks. You don't have to think about that. Once you're on your pitch, your compromise is space and warmth. Because no matter what you do in here, I think at the end of the day, it's a van. It's not a motorhome or a caravan with all that insulation. Although these do have some insulation, as far as I know, in the walls, it is still a van and you're going to feel the cold. And that's probably what we took away from that. And the thing as well, that also learning, just watching people whilst you're out on site, there was another camper van that, that pulled up last night 
and they had a, a two lay box on the roof for extra space yeah. they had quite a large awning which obviously attached to this door so every time you're opening the door you're not losing the heat instantly because it had the awning on so there are little things that we we would do yeah. you know to yeah to combat sort of what um, we've found and what we're doing tonight is we're heading off to um chipping norton there'll be a separate vlog on that we're going to diddly squat farm jeremy clarkson's farm so we're going to go have a look at his farm shop so that's where we're going next and tonight we're going to put into practice what we learned from our first night last night and i think tonight will be a much better night because we'll have a better idea it's like when you get a first caravan or a first moto you're new to it once you get your little the places for room. things yeah and i think it is so what i'll say is it's been really interesting we've been able to try this if you're thinking of a camper i did a social media post today and a lot of people are already saying they're thinking of getting a camper as a tow car even what i would definitely say is broad lane have, have let us have this for three nights this is one of their camper ways they have a higher branch called higher away i'm going to put links in the description for all of that i would say think about hiring one of these it's a i think prices start at 90 pounds for a night based on our experience it would be i would be so i'm glad we've got to try this and i think it is probably invaluable they also have motorhomes that you can hire and if you're thinking about camper van or motorhome and i'm going to do a separate vlog on that but if you're thinking about camper van, camper van or motorhome i think to hire them and try them before you spend a lot of money is really a good way to go absolutely but yeah so our my next vlog we're going to film a review of this next and then we're going to film the the trip to chipping norton and the farm shop um hopefully this has been of interest to you if you're thinking of camper vanning it's hopefully given you just a little bit of an insight it's given us a massive insight we've really we have enjoyed it we might sound like we haven't but we have what we've enjoyed is the opportunity to do it and finding out these things that we probably didn't really expect straight away. Sometimes you've got to try before you buy, and yeah, it's been interesting. It's been a massive eye opener, and I'm so glad because I've I've always wanted to do this. So this is a little bit of a, a bit of a dream trip for me because I I love camper vans, but um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's been it's been insightful. Yeah, it really so. has. Um, so hopefully you found that of some use. I know in the comments you'll all be like, oh god, what a pair of idiots! I can't believe you did this. But yeah. equally. If you've actually got some really good tips or pointers, put them in the comments because other people read the comments and you might have some really sound advice about equipment you've bought or things you've done. And it might be in the future we get to go camper vanning again and we take that on board. So yeah, thank you for you guys for watching. Thank you to Broadlane and Campaway who've let us take this away. Our travels continue now, which we are looking forward to. Um, so yeah that's brilliant all the links are in the description below as i say the camper way is a really solid camper oh, yeah. i mean we'll say that i mean it's certainly i think the campers are a lot more solid than motorhomes we Quali said that the last night is, yeah, yeah really you, there's, there. there's differences we've, we've noticed that but again that's something for some other vlo other vlogs but yeah we, we have noticed that right okay let's crack on with our review next so as always, thanks for watching and we'll see, see you in, in the, the next, next one. one.